I'm visiting a gardener I've been following on social media who has created a backyard full of food in just under two years. It's not just the variety of veg or the ideas in the garden that stand out. It's her relationship to the Lebanese culture in both food and planting. Sahar lives in Chester Hill to the west of Sydney. With the help of an online army of gardening friends giving her advice, she has single-handedly transformed a dusty yard from this to this. Saha, it's so amazing to finally meet you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. I can tell it's going to be even more impressive than I've seen on social media. Oh, goodness, I hope so. <laughs> well, let's go take a look. Let's go. Wow, sir. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit different than how it used to look. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank like, you. Look what you've done and look what you're growing. There's oh. everything here. Thank you so much. Well, what inspired you to garden and grow this? Oh, I think it's because we were stuck indoors a few years ago for so long and the kids were getting, you know, so I was I came out to hide in the garden. Even now, if Mummy can't be found, she's out in the back she's, hiding. We know she's out there somewhere. Yes, She'll exactly. Come home eventually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've seen a lot on your social media that you love to cook what I you do. grow. I do. You know what, I'm not actually a, a great cook, but it's different when the produce is from your garden. Um, I don't like to see anything go to waste, so that's definitely a bonus. So what sorts of things are you growing? Um, I like to grow a lot of cultural things, so I'm incorporating some Egyptian spinach and some eggplant, beans and some chickpeas, so a little bit of a flavour of my childhood. So I've seen that you talk a lot about the Egyptian spinach in your posts. I do, yeah. So that's it here. Um, I, I find it a lot easier to grow than English spinach. And what do you normally do with the, the cooking? I make the um, garlic and onion and fresh tomatoes stew dish. But if you have a taste of it, just grab a leaf. It's actually quite gelatinous, so it's best suited in soups. Not so much freshly eaten or anything like oh, that. Oh, I see. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really have a taste, but I can tell when you yeah. have a texture. And that's even more so when it's cooked. Yeah, it's like a bit slimy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this around much. It's actually quite hard to find, and even the seeds are hard to find. Um, I think now you're seeing a lot more of it in Middle Eastern grocers, but in the past, my parents used to have to go to an actual farm that grew them just to be able to enjoy them in their home. So how you've clearly learnt a lot from online, but it also really seems to be in your blood. What are your top tips? Uh, well, I'm organic, so we companion plant a lot here. So we have some marigold for the thrips, some hibiscus for the flea beetles. They've left my eggplants alone this season. And the chickpeas have been planted to attract caterpillars, so they stay away from my tomatoes. I've noticed you've grown your zucchinis vertically. Why is that? It's to avoid powdery mildew. So this is the first season I've done it and it's made a huge difference. So it's simply training your stem up a stake and then any leaves hanging below that last fruit gets chopped and it improves airflow. So it's really improved the powdery mildew for me. And I've also noticed you've got some interesting structures keeping your zucchinis in place. Well, yes, I need to support the ladies. I'm keeping them for seeds, so as they become large, they become very heavy. So I needed to provide some support so they don't prematurely fall off. So I've grown up with a pomelo tree, like it's been in my parents' backyard. Lucky. lucky. Yes. I, don't, I don't know if I felt lucky. Oh. I've, I've never really loved it, but I know you're obsessed. obsessed. So this is my pride and joy of all my citrus, the pomelo. I think it started 22 years ago now. I went overseas to Lebanon for a holiday. I never heard of a pomelo before. My auntie has like a big citrus orchard in her backyard and I used to sit under the pomelo tree and freshly pick and eat them and then I came back to Australia and I couldn't find them. It took me 20 years to hunt down this pomelo and last year was the first year I tasted it. It's in between a um, grapefruit and an orange. Yeah. It's not bitter like a grapefruit, it's not wet like an orange. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. So 
how you've got some standout structures in your garden. Like, I love that rustic ladder. Oh, thank you. Tell me about what's going on here. Oh, I've always loved the look or the idea of being able to walk through an archway. Um, so I got a few, put them together, connected them and created my own. And I can see you've got a lot of produce growing on these arches. I do. I wanted to grow vertically a lot this year so I can fit more in. So we have your tromboncino and your Lebanese cucumbers, different varieties of tomatoes, your snake beans, your Richmond green cucumbers, cucumelon, so it's jam-packed. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, so we have gardened and now we're going to graze. So how, what have you got here? This looks amazing. A lot of garden goodies. So we have the Egyptian spinach. We call it Luchia banadura. This is the bean, so lubia azat, eggplant, button jan, and chickpeas hummus, and just a garden salad or fatouche. Uh, yum, and this is all from the garden? Everything is from the garden, yes. All right, so let's try some of the Egyptian spinach, and then some of the eggplant. So let's try some of this, please. Mmm. Well, I see what you mean. Like, it's still very gelatinous. It is. But it takes on the flavour. It does. It's got that onion and garlic and that fresh tomato flavour. Mmm. Yeah, that's why I really, really love this stuff. It's so much better cooked than raw. It is, definitely. Yes, it is. <laughs> what does this all mean to you? I, don't, I think with gardening and um, being able to cook, from my own garden, it gives me a sense of empowerment, especially to have to feed my, my kids and my family from something that I've grown. Um, and it kind of brings us together. As we know, food is all about community, family, laughing, building memories. And I think gardening and cooking go hand in hand. Oh, yes, it certainly does. <laughs> and on that note, I think we should continue eating. Yes, let's do that. Oh, this bubble ganoush is so good. <laughs> nice and garlicky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just how I like it. <laughs>